with some of the things I've said about the Church of Scientology recently, you'll most likely be surprised to know, there are aspects of being a Scientologist that I miss sometimes. Most of what I learned about the mind and spirit comes from reading L. Ron Hubbard's books, taking basic Scientology courses, then progressing to academy training where I learned the fundamentals of auditing on an e-meter. I've even gone on a free winds cruise and taken a course. Without this background, I wouldn't have stood much of a chance of learning and eventually mastering TROM, much less taken upon myself the responsibility of teaching TROM to the masses. A great deal of time spent reading, doing drills in the academy, and eventually becoming a Scientology course supervisor enabled me to take this role I am in now, and I am often thankful for it, yet I am sure that hosting this YouTube channel and disseminating this subject matter annoys card-carrying church members to no end. If the church had played fair with me, and my experience with them didn't leave me with such a bad taste in my mouth, chances are I'd still be with them and loyal to a fault. I won't go into what happened here, but if you want some of the details, watch the video why I left Scientology and now do Trom on this channel, which covers the main points, but not even a tenth of the full story. Now you might at this point be thinking to yourself that Trom is just Scientology repackaged, and that you have to be a Scientologist in order to understand Trom. And you would be mistaken. Trom is not just some repackaging of Scientology, and Dennis Stevens made sure of that. And you don't have to be a former Scientologist to understand Trom, because I am the one making sure of that. Scientology was a stepping stone that led to the discovery of Trom technology. You could say Scientology's relationship to Trom is similar to the relationship elementary school mathematics has to high school algebra and geometry. Dennis Stevens's discoveries which culminated in Trom levels 1 through 3 allow you on a personal level to gain comparable benefits to Dianetics auditing while working all by yourself. This is something L. Ron Hubbard himself said was impossible. But it is possible, and our video returning in Dianetics versus time-breaking in Trom proves it. Trom levels 4 and 5 offer you comparable benefits to Scientology auditing without the need of a separate practitioner or an e-meter. Any well-trained Scientology practitioner who no longer lives in fear of what the church will do to him if he explores other subjects will come to this understanding by watching our series titled, Trom vs. Scientology. Calling Trom repackaged Scientology is like calling a jet fighter a repackaged biplane. Anyone who has studied both subjects without the fear of what the church will do to them for engaging in so-called squirreling knows this. Still, whether we like it or not, Dennis was a Scientologist. And that was his starting point. He also used a logic system called Boolean algebra to further refine his concepts, something Hubbard never entered into any of his calculations regarding the mind, at least none that I ever studied. As a side note, you don't have to know Boolean algebra to practice Trom either. But you may wonder, well, why couldn't Dennis have just invented new terminology for his subject? Why does he have to include Scientology terms in his book and in his lectures, making his subject more difficult to understand by layman? The answer is simple. The resolution of Mind a Game's manual was not written for layman. It was written for L. Ron Hubbard. The original intent was to get that book into Hubbard's hands so he could revolutionize his subject. But it never happened. Even in the 90s, Trom was still primarily practiced by ex-Scientologists, so when Dennis recorded his more advanced findings, he did so in cassette correspondence to his ex-Scientologist friends who practiced Trom. Dennis wanted the world to know about Trom, and he wanted as many people as possible to practice it. But he failed to communicate his subject in a way the average person could understand. All of the material on our channel is intended to correct that fundamental mistake. We define terms. We give visual demonstrations. We have reorganized the study sequence so you can first master the simpler Trom concepts before tackling the more difficult ones. After five and a half years of studying and practicing Trom, and a year and a half of not only creating instructional videos but are taking time to revise, annotate, illustrate and provide a full glossary for the original manual, I can now say for the first time, without any doubts or reservations, you don't have to be a former Scientologist to understand and practice Trom. 
And if after watching our videos and reading the revised manual you are still left scratching your head, you can email to us or post a comment and we will straighten you out on the subject matter personally. And we've done this many times. Much of our content is a result of answering viewer questions. Now back to the subject of Scientology. I'm sorry to say that the church has ruined their reputation and done a fine job of it all by themselves. Forget about the mudslinging you see on the news or online. I am talking about their failures to follow their own policies like with the Ideal Org project, or practice their own technology properly, as in the example of the squirreled course pack I talked about in my last audio journal entry. The church is being foolish on a public level with their shiny yet empty buildings, and on a member-to-member -member level by making the tech less standard and thus less effective. Anyone who was in Scientology in the late 1980s and still involved now knows all about this. And they can only deny the truth of the matter for so long. Yet despite all of this upset and controversy, Scientology is still worth knowing. Just make sure you study materials that were published before David Miscavige started tampering with them and you'll be fine. In the final analysis, Scientology as a subject, as opposed to an activity, or to put more clearly, a corrupted activity, like with the church, is a collection of books and recordings. That's it. It's a body of knowledge. No more, no less. Just because there's a group of people out there who think this body of knowledge gives them some sort of authority they don't actually have, doesn't make the data itself any sort of evil or corrupted thing. You can read the book Dianetics, The Modern Science of Mental Health by L. Ron Hubbard and begin to audit your friends and have them audit you and it would be a joyous activity. Or you could read it and start copying an attitude that your advanced knowledge of the human mind makes you superior to others. Either way, the value and usefulness of the data remains unchanged. So, should you study Scientology if you are interested in Trong? That is your decision, and yours alone. And I have designed this channel to empower you to make that decision for yourself. I will never shame anyone for studying and practicing Scientology, even if they are church members. But the Church of Scientology will tell you not to practice Trom if you are a member. In that comparison, I can't think of a clearer example of a subject that leads you to spiritual freedom while respecting your personal freedom on one side and an authoritarian organization that professes to lead you to spiritual freedom on one hand while limiting your personal freedom on another, on the other side. Practice whatever religion you want. Make friends with whomever you want. Say whatever you want about us or anyone else. Keep your money and spend it on what you see fit. Here, the only way we seek to influence or control others is by making sure they know Trom theory and practice Trom exercises correctly. I'm Alison Tandry. We are DIY Salvation. Don't just use your mind. Resolve it.